Hey guys, it's Midnight Philopicker, and I'm here to tell you about the advanced tension technique referred to as float picking. Typically, when we're picking a lock, we apply tension in one direction with our tool like this. And then we'll go through the pins one by one, looking for the binding pins, and a lot of times we'll fall into a false set like that. That will usually indicate we're on a spool pin, and if we can find that spool pin and push on it, it will give us counter-rotation, as you can see. Counter-rotation is where the plug is turning the opposite direction just from the force of pushing up on the spool pin with your pick. And if you can balance the tension just right while you do that, you can push the pin up to the point where it will set. Now what happens if we have a lock like this one, the ASA 700, and it's designed to nullify the counter-rotation you get when you fall in the false set that this lock provides. The way it does it is with driver pins called gin spool driver pins that interact with counter milling in the plug here. And they lock in in a way that when you push up on them, even when you're in the false set, you don't get any counter rotation. So what you need to do is float pick. Float pick is where you're able to control the rotation of the plug in both directions very precisely. The way you can do this is with two tensioners or one really tight tensioner, like this. As you can see, this tensioner is tight enough that it allows me to tension the lock in both directions, and this one is not. And a lot of times we don't have a tensioner that's the perfect size, so if you don't, what you'll have to do is put a second tensioner in, in a way that allows you to control the rotation of the plug in both directions. But that leads me to the second important point of float picking is that you must leave yourself enough space for your pick to fit inside as well. If you put the tensioner in a way that it allows you to rotate the plug in both directions, but at the same time there's no space for you to get your pick in anywhere, then that's no good. So you need to be able to find a way to tension the plug in both directions and have space to get the, t the pick in. So I'm just showing a couple examples of ways you can try to tension this lock, but every lock is different depending on the keyway. And if you want to see me pick this lock, I will leave a, a description in the, a, a link to the video in the description of this video where you can check that out. But for this video, I will demonstrate float picking with this lock, which is called the Avis EC7530. And this lock, as you can see, is a dimple lock with some pretty tricky warding. And the lock will only turn in the clockwise direction, as most pad locks do, and it will not turn in the counterclockwise direction. So that means when I pick it, I have to pick it only in the one direction. But this is a problem because this warding here is designed in a way that prevents me from really getting a good angle on the pins from this side, I find. And the best way I can get an angle on the pins is right underneath this little piece of warding right here. Now, if I try to pick the lock as is, there are six driver pins that are all spool pins. And because of the nature of dimple picks and how they have rotational force, when you apply force to a pin, you're also applying force to the plug, forcing that, that core to turn. So ideally, if I'm picking a lock with clockwise tension, I want to be using a dimple pick that allows me to pick in the counterclockwise rotational direction. But because of this warding, I can't really get a good angle on the pins that way. So that's where my problem is. In order to deal with this, I can try to float pick. This lock on its own has some spring um, to the core, so it will pull it back by itself. And that's enough to actually float pick the lock as is. But it's not controlled. I don't get to control how much it's really pulling the plug back, so I have to just balance it by pushing the pin 
and trying to find that perfect spot where it will set. And it's a lot trickier, but if I just take a second tensioner and put it in the lock in a way that allows me to fit them both in, then I can now get full rotation of the core in both directions, utilizing the technique we discussed earlier called float picking. And now in order to pick this lock, I'll just go through the pins one by one and show how I do it. Pin one is binding, just releasing some tension with my second tensioner, gotta click. Pin two is binding, same thing, click. Pin three is binding, click. Pin four is binding. It's a little bit higher up. But I got a click out of him, pin 5, and pin 6, and the lock is open. So, as you can see, float picking really made a big difference in order to make this guy a lot easier. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in, and hope this helped you in your lock picking journey. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I hope you have a nice day. Take care.